Hey everybody, this is Perch. We've talked a lot about continuity on this channel, and uh, I'm, I respect continuity. I like continuity. I think um, having a good basis in continuity is a strength for you as a writer. Now, I, I know some writers feel opposite. I think there's a, a feeling that sets up in comics that too much continuity equals handcuffs. Basically, you can't tell the story you really want to tell because continuity is getting in the way. Because, uh, you know, you, you're just your box into a corner. And I think that, you know, over time, addressing the history and complexity of all these different characters and the various things they have going on does make it tougher, but not impossible. And to me, the value of continuity outweighs the, uh, the negatives, you know, the, the strength of being able to have a platform that you can build on and uh, create rich depth of character. I mean, I, I, would, I would challenge writers to look at it a little differently, rather than looking at uh, continuity as a as as handcuffs as, as a handicap to your stories instead think about it this way the continuity it's what's giving these characters more flavor more importance and and basically it's a crutch for you as a writer to lean on as opposed to get hung up on that you know you, you can do shorthand with some of the beats of your characters because there's already history history there that somebody else has established to draw upon i think that makes your writing stronger I think it gives you more options rather than having to build up certain aspects about a character or history. There's, there's ready-made stuff there for you. You know, they, that work has already been done. So you can leverage that and, and quite frankly, get to the story you want to tell faster. I think it's all in how you look at it. I think that, again, I, there, people at times are contradictory in terms of what they want. They want everything to be a blank slate. And they also want to draw upon all the richness of the character. It's why, by the way, this argument that goes on about uh, Laura Kinney is the real Wolverine. That whole argument. It's a dumb argument. In a lot of ways, it's a dumb argument. But, you know, if, if Laura Kinney, the character, was, you know, rich and at depth and all the rest of that kind of stuff, um, you know, you, wouldn't, you, you could argue that the name Wolverine in that past and all the rest, I, I mean, why are you fighting so hard to grab onto that, to achieve that? It, it, it's, um, it's a negative for you. But they're doing that. They 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 make they're so insistent upon this is the real Wolverine, all that kind of stuff, because they want that help. They want that boost. They basically want people coming to the character going, Oh yeah, I know Wolverine. And then they want to have the aha moment of like, ah no, it's a girl Wolverine. It's a different Wolverine. And then they kind of in an obnoxious, passive aggressive way want to go, Well, uh oh, so wait wait a minute. So you're you're are you a sexist pig who doesn't uh you know, who can't admit that a that a girl could be Wolverine? It's like it, it, it shifts the whole argument around. The entire thing is very phony, but it, it reveals a little bit about where continuity is valuable. Continuity was not valuable and you, you just need to be free from it. Well, as a comic writer, there's a ton of ways to accomplish that goal. You can create brand new characters that are a complete blank slate for you to draw upon. You could also do indie comics and be, you know, your own, you're completely in control of your own destiny. But when you're coming in and you're writing within continuity, and then you bitch about having to write within continuity, you have to understand you made that choice. And quite frankly, for your career and your pay and everything else, you know, you, you, I, who was I, I was seeing a writer really complain about how hard it was to write for Spider-Man because Spider-Man has so much continuity and the fans are always going to be picking at you for continuity and all the rest of that kind of stuff. It's like, yeah, but you're getting the paycheck for Spider-Man. You're getting the name recognition for Spider-Man. You're getting a boost to your career, and it's a significant boost because you're working on a character everyone knows. So, you know, and not, let's not discount that. Let's not, uh, let's not, you know, let's not brush that aside so casually. I think that's, um, I, I, I don't know. Anyway, it, it bugs. But I wanted to talk about continuity in the sense of, you know, how, you know, how restrictive is it? And I want to throw out one kind of fact is that if you, you know, if you've run a comic store, or worked in a comic store, or just been around a comic store for a long period of time, you've certainly been exposed to long at sometimes spiraling at sometimes very, very annoying conversations about continuity, about stories like, well, you know, this story is, is not canon because of this continuity error, blah, blah. It's why Marvel created the no prize. It's why there's, you know, it's been kind of a joke for a while. Comic fans have been like this forever. This is not a new development. This had nothing to do with Twitter or Facebook or MySpace, or I can keep going back in time. This is, uh, this is how people have been since the 70s. And, and this is not, you know, comic, uh, you know, Jim Shooter, Stan Lee, 
uh, people, you know, uh, I'm trying to think of Kennedy, some of the other kind of big names in the past. Um, there's, look, it, this used to be a good thing. You know, I, Stan Lee, uh, somewhere in one of his uh, soapboxes, wrote a bit about how, you know, do, do fans who pick at continuity bother him? He's like, to the contrary, these are all people who are invested in the product we're making. Not only does it not bother me, I mean, this is, it's amazing. It's amazing to me that somebody is paying attention so closely that they actually are, are trying to correct errors we've made. So rather than take it as an insult, we take it as pride. Now, you know, that was Stan Lee, and that was a different time period. And I will say the uh, current crop of uh, comic uh, people have seemed to have thinner skips. Now, bear, make no mistake. I'm sure, you know, Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, you know, set the desk together. Uh, somebody writes in pointing out some error that, that Lee or Kirby made. I don't think uh, Stan Lee and Kirby sat there going, wow, what a great customer. I'm so glad somebody corrected our mistake. Boy, this is what makes us all strong. I'm sure they're like, ah, fuck this person. I, Kirby's like, I'm going to go down to the street and punch him right in the mouth. I'm sure that happened. But both of them were smart enough to kind of clean themselves up you know, and, uh, and, and, and basically, uh, you know, put on the public face of, Hey, thanks. Thank you for, uh, thank you for correcting us. Thank you for, uh, caring about our comics so much. Maybe this is just that Stan Lee didn't, and, uh, and Kirby didn't have Twitter. So, you know, and, and, you know, when, when Twitter was around, Stan Lee was older to the point that, you know, he wasn't really putting in there, but can you imagine, I'd actually, what would Jack Kirby's Twitter have been like? I, I imagine it would have been very like, uh, kind of like the iron Sheik. That's what's kind of in my head. Like, fuck you. <laughs> just, just that. I don't know. I, I have that. I have that mentality. Um, but I think, uh, you know, you, first recognizing that, that fans are like this and have been like this forever, like really forever. This is this is what it means to be a comic fan. Continuity is not something that is uh, I, I, to me. I just think there's a million easy ways to get around it. I think you can certainly have the entire multiverse and sword stories if you really want to go, you know, blank sheet of paper with your characters. But I mean, in a world where we have mind control and fake memories and all that kind of stuff, I, I don't, I think a lot of stuff are, are a lot of it's tropes and they're cliche, but you know, they, they still, uh, they're not impossible to do. So why, you know, why not, uh, you know, why not lean into that a little bit? I think that, um, it can be fun. I guess that's my point. It, it can all be fun if you just choose it to be. I think it can be torture if you choose it to be. And that's that's maybe the the biggest distinction here is that, you know, you don't choose violence, <laughs> if you will. Um, you know, consider that it is some of this, I mean, it's, look, the fans are going to be there to point things out. I grant you, fans get obsessive and weird about that at times. But it, it doesn't have to be a nightmare. It doesn't have to be a fight. And what I've also found, and this is a part that very few people mention, you know, they're very quick to point out all the places where fans are, are rude and they, they, they're, they're demanding and they, they want certain things. I, I see a lot of those stories. Oh. But where are the stories about fans that forgive? Because the other part that, and I know it's not nearly as sexy, but if there's one group of people that I have found to be some of the absolute most forgiving, um, you know, you know, customer base groups, it's comic fans. And I'll, 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 I'll point it out this way. Comic fans, um, they will forgive a bad run and keep buying. They may still bitch about it from time to time. Uh, they, I mean, look, the estate of the X-Men coming out of Age of X-Men, a storyline that was reviled. Uh, the, you know, uh, what was it like, um, Matty, Matty, uh, old Matty from the Bronx, Matt Rosenberg was, uh, he was, he was writing Uncanny X-Men at the time and like, I, I mean, just chilling characters off and just, just ugly stuff. I mean, he was, he was taking a hatchet to a ton of things in the X-Men. And then, you know, two weeks later, House of X number one comes out and everybody's like, holy shit, it's wonderful. I, I'm back. I forgive Comic fans tend to be like that. And even creators that, you know, people get, get people really pissed off, you know, they will forgive. I, if you, the internet, um, I, I don't know if you remember this, they were not happy with Mark Waid. And several people, you know, several people uh, are still not happy with Mark Waid. But Mark Waid started doing that World's Finest book with Superman and Batman. 
it's a pretty decent book. And, you know, what do you know? I'm seeing a lot more praise for Wake. People who, you know, previously said this was the absolute spawn of Satan on Earth. Uh, same thing with uh, when Wade when you took over Captain America uh, for a brief period of time. There was another, you know, after Spencer, uh, there was a period of time. Now, he, he then veered into a storyline immediately pissed everybody off again. But he, uh, Wade, Wade, I mean, people, Kung fans are, are extremely ready to forgive and forget. They, they maybe not forget, but definitely forgive. They will forgive a bad run. They'll forgive a creator doing something bad. They'll they'll forgive all kinds of stuff. And and that that's not what we hear. We hear toxic fans. Everybody sucks. They're bad. They, they they're so demanding. Always you know wanting me me me. We hear that stuff. But the reality is, um, you know, most of the time fans will bitch, but then they get over it and they buy or they find something else new to like. And that that is pretty core to comic fans. And again, I, I haven't seen a single group where people shit on them on a regular basis. There are football fans who, when they feel like they're uh, they're you know they've been they've been screwed over, kind of like how a lot of Denver fans right now feel with Russell Wilson. Granted, if if Denver Broncos start winning uh, hard, you know you'll see a lot of people come back. I was never mad, but it's different. Comic fans find ways, in fact, work harder than the publishers do in a lot of cases to justify some of the dumber shit that's gone on. Comic fans will invent crazy scenarios around how it all makes sense just because they, you know, love comics and want to keep reading comics. Um, as much as people take it too far, and they do, let's let's remember that comic fans also do a lot to you know, both support the industry, certainly with their wallet, but also forgive a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of creators. Uh, there's a lot of people super pissed off at Rob Liefeld. Really pissed at him. And, you know, now I, 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 so a lot of the same people are like, hey, you know, you're okay. I'll, I'll, I'll go for you. It's, it's amazing to me. And maybe it's my vantage point, you know, running a comic shop. But I have seen the same people come in who, who swear I'm never buying this ever, ever again. To go, you know what? I thought about it. I'm going to give it a second chance, and here's why maybe it wasn't so bad. Where else do you see that? I don't know. Not many places. I think that uh, I think there needs to be at least a little bit of praise tossed out in all these articles, all these jokey bullshit things that comic news sites do, that people on Twitter does. A, a lot of people bitch about comic fans, but they could do with you know, at least uh, giving a little bit of uh, acknowledgement to the fact. A lot of these same comic fans, they welcome you back into their house. Even a lot of people like, I'm done buying Marvel forever, fuck Marvel, is burning in hell. Okay, first of all, a lot of people who say that were never that were never comic fans in the first place. And you could tell that because you could easily, like, toss up a... I, I, I tossed up a panel, not intentionally, of a really stupid storyline in uh in batman that happened i don't know at least 15 years ago and these same people are like this is why i'm never buying another dc comic They're like this is the kind of bullshit that they printed this month that could prove me right I'm like no this is 15 years ago you were not a big comic fan sir i i i'm calling bullshit it looks but others others that say they're done and done forever they find their way back a lot of times they find their way back. So, you know, just a little just a little bit of uh, acknowledgement that yeah, not that bad. Thanks for listening.